This time on Custom Works, what we're going to be doing is getting some rigidity in this old fiberglass A40 pickup. Really getting it strong, making everything work, and just getting it ready so we can do some bodywork, lay some paint down, and it all look great. Last time we had a look at, uh, we were working on this. What I did, I put these outriggers on the chassis and I made this hoop around the inside to mount the uh, seat belts to. Well, that alone would never be enough because it's only mounted down here. There's a lot of leverage by this point. So what we needed in there was some triangulation. So what I've done, I've bought this piece of 3B2 steel across here mitered it in here, put these two large gusset brackets here and this is all seam welded and this is bonded to the back of this and already this is starting to feel uh, a lot more rigid, a lot more car like uh, rather than just being a flapping like unbraced piece of plastic. So we've done that and also at the back we have these two pieces here now these come down, I've tapered them down, welded them to the back of the chassis and also I've, got, I've plated them in here. The actual thickness of these is probably a bit of overkill but the sides of the pickup bed will cover these. If you imagine these will always be in tension so if you were to need the seat belts that bit can't fall forward for anymore because we've got these attached to there and they can't move forward and on the inside on the inside we've got uh, these big gusset plates and there they would stop any flex sort of this way and that way. They tie in good and it makes it by the top of this gusset plate which is absolutely rock solid we're only going to be you know like a couple of hundred mil away from where the top mount to the seat belt is and this piece of uh, heavy duty box section isn't going to bend so now We've got somewhere for the top and bottom mount for the seat belt. We've also got steel under the floor. That thankfully was already there for the, you know, for the seat belt latches. But most of all, we've got a lot more sturdier structure. A structure where the doors are going to shut, the doors are going to latch better. And um, when I'm doing the body prep, uh, you know, things won't be things won't be moving as I'm sanding. This is what I don't want to. I don't want to be trying to get things straight, but this bit wobbles a bit. I need it all rock solid, and that is exactly what this is now. Right, and so to make the back of this cab a little bit less flexible, because it is mega flexible, um, what I'm going to do is bond these two bits of plywood onto here. Now, this. This thing undulates, you know what I mean? It is everywhere. There's these bits here, in and out, and to stick something, I need sort of full surface to surface adhesion. So what I'm gonna use is this uh, Insta-Stick stuff. And this is normally used to stick uh, plasterboard onto walls if you dry line in somewhere. Um, and it's very good. So what I'll do, I'll cover both of these boards, give it five minutes, uh, let it just go tack it and then stick it on and what that will do is the foam dries hard and it will create a cushion between the wood and the fiberglass and make things just a lot better so when we're doing the bodywork on the outside of this it's not quite so flexible To be clear on this, this isn't expanding foam, it's like a foam adhesive. Now, if you do this with expanding foam, what will happen? You'll put it on and then it'll just sort of push away and there'll just be a big lump of expanding foam. So I'm not expanding foam, like a foam adhesive, like Insta Stick, something like that. That's what you need. Okay, and so this has started to feel a little bit sort of like it's going off and this is the time to actually stick it on. So I shall stick this 
and for her, it's one. Of, it's a bit of a. It's a bit of a one-shot deal as well. You don't get much time to mess about with it. But there we go. So that goes on there. Hopefully, that'll stick. Always best, you know, there's a gap along here. You can always like just uh, fill in with some of the foam adhesive. It dries. Just make sure it, you know, sticks a lot better. Um, and when this is dry, in about half an hour, what will happen is uh, the back of the body will be that much more rigid. When I'm building the bed, I've got something to screw to. Um, you know, it just makes the whole car better. And this will really reduce the noise inside the car because there's less drumming of the panels. All the, you know, all the metal and this extra timber and everything that's gone in here, probably not the timber, so that just makes the car a lot more sort of rigid and quiet, but definitely the steel makes the car a lot safer. And you might be thinking, oh, this is total overkill, you know, putting all of this framework in here just to carry the seat belts. But just bear in mind, that nobody ever has said, after a crash, I wish I hadn't have made that car so safe. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is the inside of the bonnet. And it, this bonnet is really, really flexible. I'm surprised at just how, you know, there really is it's nothing to it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to brace it. It has got some rigidity. Um, you know, if you've got a panel that's this floppy, you're never going to be able to fill it, you're never going to be able to paint it, you're never going to be able to make it, you know, look anything. It's always just going to be really gappy and a bit crap. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to brace it, and I'm going to brace it with bits of ply. You know, a lot of the time people think, well, this panel's a bit wobbly, I'm going to build a steel frame. Just wasting your time. What you need to do, you need to brace fiberglass with fiberglass. Now, these little bits, well, I'm, going to, I'm going to stick them on with car filler so they don't move. Um, don't even matter if there's gaps. When I get to curves, I'll just put smaller pieces in, like this, and stick them on. Now, what I'll do is I'll fiberglass over these, and that's where the bracing comes in. The wood is just the material, I, you know, the material that I had laying around. This could be a strip of foam, whatever you want. This won't make anything more rigid. What will make things more rigid is the fiberglass going over that will make like a C channel that bonds to the flat. And there you have your triangulation in that piece and that makes this a lot more rigid. So it's not the stuff inside, it's the fiberglass that's gonna go over that that actually makes it more rigid. And I'll probably put here, I'll probably go with the central spine, go here, and then you know what, that will probably be good enough because the front of this is quite rigid because it's got that rounded classic A40 look. So um, let's get this glued on, let's get some fiberglass out, let's make this a bit more rigid. The bonnet, we did the bonnet, let it dry overnight, and I've got to say it didn't work. Now, 
I don't know what it is on this bonnet. I think this, this rough fiberglass has been brushed over in gel coat and it's sort of got like a, a certain, you know, it's got like a greasiness to it so it releases nicer from the mould. I think that's what this has been painted with. As a consequence of that, my fiberglass didn't stick to it at all. So this morning what I did, I just priced the whole thing out, trimmed it up and now I've bonded it in like this. Um, I've scuffed up through to the bare fiberglass and uh, then bonded this framework in. I think it looks actually better than it was gonna look. And I know I've got a good, um, you know, sort of adhesion to that, but we'll be aware of that on the rest of the project because that was a pain in the ass. One of the next jobs is just to get, you know, some sort of wheel arch. Now, this is the sort of thing we want as an inner wheel arch. So if we have a look in here, you know, we can see that we have an inner wheel arch. Oh, this is nice and everything's nice and sort of solid. This wing here is braced um, and there's no way of any sort of water or anything uh, going back and into the door. However, this isn't how it came. This is one I've already done. Let's have a look what it looked like earlier today. So then this is what it started out like. And as you can see, oh look, there's, there's the coil just under there. There's a coil um, just right near the, where the wheel will be splashing and here as well. I can just look through. There's just nothing here whatsoever. Um, to be honest, I don't think this car has ever actually been on the road because it, it would just be terrible. And, and also, if you, know, if you look under it, like, um, all of this is just sort of loose. It's just sort of sat in there down the side of the engine. So what we're going to be doing, this is how the other side was, but we're going to be doing like on that other side, simplifying, simplifying the shape so water runs off and you never want to make a, uh, you know, like a, a pocket for moisture to gather. We'll be simplifying those shapes, glassing all that in, and we're doing all of this in dye bond, uh, fiberglass. As I've always said, dye bond's fantastic. It's got a lot of strength. Um, it's easy to cut, easy to work with, and it's never going to rot away. So yeah, unlike the other side where this is all rock solid now, look, this is just this. You know, you get any, anything over about 40 mile an hour, this is going to flap in the wind. So thin. So we will be sorting this out. Also, there is no way of body working something this thin. There's no way I can start to make that right because it will move as I sand it. And I've got to get this to flow nicely once the doors are hung into the doors. And the doors on this, uh, you know, the gap, it's like it's like off a different car, the gap's that big. So I'll sort all this out, brace all this, and then hopefully we'll be able to fit the bonnet and the doors. Everything's gonna be rigid, and then we can start sorting gaps and sorting the fit out of how everything goes. But for now, let's make it so water isn't just flying up into the electrics and also that um, everything's just a little bit more solid. So on the other side, um, <clears throat> I made a template out of this, uh, this stuff. It's, it's like cardboard, but made out of plastic. You use it to um, protect carpets if you're doing building work. You can use cardboard, cereal boxes, one of my favorite. Um, whatever you like. I made this template for the other side. Now I can't really show you this, it's quite tight under there, but this side, this, fitted perfectly in that side. On this side of the car, it literally has no bearing to anything else. The only thing that's about right is the top of that, which is about the profile of the underside of this uh, front wing. So um, I'm gonna modify this and make another template and then we'll try and cut that out of a piece of dye bond and try and sort of fit it in there. Very complicated shape, so. And as you can see, from the, uh, even from the inside under the bonnet, you know, the, the new inner wing looks a little bit even tidier just there. And of course in there you've got the Pinto engine. And if you come round to the other side, the only thing that's making the inner wing is my face at the minute. It's particularly uncomfortable. But this is quite a big hole. I think any hole in a car you can almost get your head through, that must be an issue. One thing on this car that is absolutely like belt and braces that's really good is this chassis. 
I don't know who's built this chassis, but if you recognise it, then uh, my hat is off to you. Very g good job. Everything's plated. It's uh, it's in like a 3B2 um, thick wall steel. It is absolutely bulletproof. And just these two supports up to this strut. You know, if you're going to do it, this is how it's done. And chassis really good. Body sort of just placed on top of it. <laughs> but we're going to sort all that out. Okay, so this is the wheel arch underneath now. It's hard to make out, but I've sort of just taped lots of stuff together and got rid of a lot of the, you know, like the dirt traps and stuff. And now what I'm ready to do is take all of this out and transfer all these templates and make them all out of dye bond. Just to show you these parts here, um, like this. This all really rattles, and I think there's some sort of bracketry here that's meant to have tried to hold it, but you know, look, it's right up against the suspension strut and everything there. <laughs> all this at the back, this all moves a lot. Um, so, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put PU sealant around all of this. I'm going to glue it all back to the car um, because. Even once I've put my bit in, this will still be behind it, clanking away. You know, you might just be watching this thinking, oh, one day I'm going to build a hot rod, one day I'm going to do a modified car. And some of you might never have ridden in a hot rod, you know, never ridden in like a 1930s car that's got a massive V8 in. But I've ridden in quite a few, and there are exceptions. I'm sure there is, but most of them... Are a, are a terrifying, vibrating, clanky mess. You know, there's a lot of noise, a lot of, and that's hot rodding, that's how it is. And you know, when you're used to driving, I don't know, whatever your daily driver is, those cars are all so nice, and you do 60, 70 mile an hour, and um, you don't fear for your life. But um, I've been in several cars at around about 50, 60, 70 mile an hour, you, uh, your life flashes before you because so many things shaking, wobbling, vibrating. And when you're building a car, try and think, I want this car to be like my daily driver. I want it to be quiet and I want to be able to travel on the motorway and know nothing's going to blow off. Which if we didn't do this to this car, I would be seriously worried that stuff's going to blow off it. So I've cut all them bits out and now what I'm going to do is go over them with the DA just to make sure it's a good key so when I glass them and glue them into place they stay there forever. I'm going to show you under the wheel arch just for, just for the sheer amount of uh, filling in that's had to go on here. That is a lot of sort of making good. Now I've got to do some nasty upside down fiberglassing just to make sure this wing ends up just as strong as the other one. Okay then, so that's it for this week. Join us next time when we do more on the A40, more custom bodywork, more getting it right, and just more generally. So don't forget, click subscribe, click the bell icon for regular updates. Also leave comments down below and give us a big thumbs up. Hope you all like that. If not, it's happened now. There's nothing you or I can do about it. Until next time, thank you very much and good night.